Good afternoon. For the record, I'm Rams Jamal, Executive Vice President and Chief Regulatory Operations Officer at the CNSC. Uh, I was the head of the delegation to the fifth review meeting of the Joint Convention. But if you're asking yourself why you're seeing this presentation for the first time or such uh, update to the Commission, that will be the first time we're having a standalone presentation to the Commission with respect to Canada's activities at the Joint Convention. With me today uh, on my left is Ms. Karine Glenn. She's the Director of the Waste and Decommissioning Division. Uh, with me also is Ms. Lenora Macon and Ms. Julie McKee, Project Officers uh, from the Waste and Decommissioning Division. And of course, as you heard, we've got our colleagues on the line who are members of the uh, Canada delegation. Uh, very briefly, this presentation is an overview of the fifth review meeting of the Joint Convention on the Safety of Spent Fuel Management and on the safety of radioactive waste management. CNSC staff will highlight the signatories to the convention who did not meet their obligation. And I believe this probably is the first time publicly we'll be stating contracting parties who did not fulfill their commitment to the convention. And we'll also highlight to you Canada's effort for improvements with respect to the convention and global safety. So I will start with four uh, countries, Iran, India, Mexico, and Pakistan, that have nuclear plants, and therefore they manage spent fuel and radioactive waste. These countries are not signatory to the Joint Convention. So in brief, uh, the table of contact does not need to be uh, much elaboration, but the presentation will focus on the outcomes of the review meeting and will summarize the conclusions. The appendix to this presentation is a summary of Canada's responses to the challenges identified at the fourth review meeting in 2012, as well as Canada's responses to some of the main written questions we received following the peer review. And the questions were received uh, due to the, our national report that is on our website, and so did the presentation we made at the Joint Convention. With this, I'll pass on the presentation over to Ms. Mackin. Thank you, Mr. Jamal. Uh, good afternoon, members of the Commission. My name is Lenora Macon. I'm a project officer in the Waste and Decommissioning Division and a member of the Canadian delegation to the Fifth Review Meeting. The Joint Convention on the Safety of Spent Fuel Management and on the Safety of Radioactive Waste Management, hereafter referred to as the Joint Convention, is an international agreement governing all aspects of spent fuel and radioactive waste management. Canada was one of the first countries, or contracting party, to endorse the Joint Convention, which came into force June 18, 2001. It represents a commitment by participating contracting parties to achieve and maintain a consistently high level of safety in the management of spent fuel and of radioactive waste as part of the global safety regime for ensuring the proper protection of people and the environment. This commitment is achieved through the peer review process, promoting open and transparent discussions culminating in a review meeting. The contracting parties taking part in the Joint Convention are required to attend a review meeting held every three years. The last such meeting was held recently on May 11th to 22nd, 2015, and the next meeting, the sixth review meeting, will be held in 2018. Other obligations include submitting a national report and responding to questions posed by other contracting parties. The review meetings are held as an incentive instrument for the purpose of meeting the obligations of the Joint Convention and to encourage open and frank discussions between contracting parties. A key component to the, to the success of a review meeting is the active participation of contracting parties of the, to the peer review process. It is through the enhancement of national measures and international cooperation that nuclear safety is achieved. As of August 14, 2015, there are 70 contracting parties with Botswana's recent accession to the Joint Convention. However, at the time of the fifth review meeting, there were 69 contracting parties. 
A trend that is evident from review meeting to review meeting is some contracting parties not fully meeting the obligations of the joint convention. This slide shows some statistics from the fifth review meeting. Currently, there, is, there are no inherent consequences or formal investigations as to why contracting parties are not meeting the obligations. This continuous trend and lack of inherent enforcement mechanisms has led Canada to propose improvements to the peer review process, such as writing letters to contracting parties head of state, investigating why some contracting parties are not meeting the obligations, and bringing this issue forward to the IAEA Board of Governors. I'll speak to this issue and Canada's efforts for improvement later in this presentation. Being a contracting party is important to Canada because it allows Canada to perform a, self, a structured self-assessment of the adequacy of adopted safety measures. It provides a forum for sharing experience and international cooperation among regulators and between regulators and industry. For example, through contacts made at the Joint Convention, CNSC staff were able to share experiences with other regulators in Sweden and Finland on the regulatory oversight of deep geological repositories. It also ensures the public that national arrangements for spent fuel and radioactive waste management conform to international agreements. And it provides a good reference through the development of a national report. This report is typically given to members of the public as well as staff of the CNSC. I'll now provide some background details on the fifth review meeting and Canada's participation. The Canadian delegation to the fifth review meeting uh, was led by CNSC with Mr. Ramsey Jamal as head of the delegation and members from Natural Resources Canada, Ontario Power Generation, Nuclear Waste Management Organization, Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, Hydro-Quebec, and Nordion. The delegation consisted of 17 people, six CNSC staff, and 11 members from the other mentioned bodies. The responsibilities of the delegates ranged from the delivery of Canada's presentations to posing questions during other contracting parties' peer review sessions, and even two delegates undertaking the role of a review officer. The delegation worked very diligently and performed at a high standard internationally to successfully meet the obligations of the Joint Convention. Canada submitted its national report in advance of the deadline of October 10th, 2014. The report contains information current up until March 2014, covering all aspects of how Canada safely manages its spent fuel and radioactive waste. Following the submission of the national report, Canada received 91 written questions from 14 contracting parties in the areas of the long-term management of spent fuel, waste minimization techniques, experiences to date with administrative monetary penalties, waste classification and clearance of radioactive material, and aging management. Canada was one of the first contracting parties to post its national report, questions and answers, and presentation, making it publicly available on the CNSC website. In addition, Canada is one of a handful of contracting parties to post its national report and questions and answers to the IAEA Joint Convention website. Contracting parties are established for each review meeting by dividing contracting parties into smaller, more manageable groups. Sorry, country groups are established. Each country group is a collection of contracting parties, some that have smaller, well, that have well-established nuclear programs and nu nuclear power installations, and some that have very little radioactive waste resulting from programs such as nuclear medicine. While Canada's national report was being peer-reviewed by other contracting parties, the Canadian delegation was performing reviews of 22 contracting parties' national reports. This included contracting parties within Canada's country group, such as Armenia, Denmark, and Uruguay, contracting parties belonging to the G8, such as Germany, the US, and France, as well as other contracting parties of interest, such as Finland, Sweden, and Kazakhstan. Following the Canadian delegation's review of the national reports, Canada po posed 79 written questions. 
This slide provides an overview of the resources required for the preparation of the conduct and conduct of the fifth review meeting. Approximately 25 CNSC staff, in addition to members of the Canadian delegation, began drafting the national report in January 2014. Following its, following its submission to the IAEA in October, the Canadian delegation began its peer review of other contracting parties' national reports and the submission of follow-up questions. At the time, in this time frame of October 2014 to April 2015, Members of the Canadian delegation and, and over 20 CNSC staff provided responses to questions posed to Canada on its national report. In total, 3.4 full-time employees from the CNSC and 1.2 full-time employees from the remaining members of the Canadian delegation were required to ensure that Canada successfully met the obligations of the Joint Convention. I will now cover the main outcomes from the fifth review meeting. Following Canada's presentation, it was determined that these challenges, that the challenges for Canada from the previous review meeting had been addressed and closed. The subsequent peer review session identified five new challenges for Canada. These were industry's access to suitable skills and resources, suitable resources to ensure regulatory oversight, to find an acceptable site and a willing host community for a spent fuel repository, to implement the GOCO management model and complete the procurement process, and to develop an inter integrated strategy for non-OPG low and intermediate level waste. There, these were largely a reflection of the challenges that Canada had self-identified in its presentation. Canada had also identified a number of good practices in its presentation. However, these were not accepted. The situation was experienced by many other contracting parties and was due to the fact that a more stringent and specific definition of a good practice had been applied for the first time at a review meeting of the Joint Convention. This new definition now harmonizes with the definition used by the Convention of Nuclear Safety. As a result of the bounding definition, only 19 good practices were identified for all 69 contracting parties. That is in comparison to over 100 identified at the fourth review meeting. Nevertheless, the peer reviewers did identify a good practice for Canada. This was in relation to the enhanced safety of radioactive sources, specifically by establishing very low cost financial guarantee means for smaller licensees, and by design requirements that facilitate the recycling and reuse of sources and to minimize the inventory of disused sealed sources. At the fifth review meeting, the contracting parties agreed on several improvements to the guidelines that will help promote full active participation and increase membership. Contracting parties made recommendations to the president of the fifth review meeting to send a letter to the DG of the IAEA and recall the importance of further promoting adherence to the Joint Convention and providing assistance to those contracting parties participating for their first review meeting. To make a presentation at the annual Code of Conduct meeting promoting adherence to the Joint Convention and to collect, assess, report and take actions on the concerns from current contracting parties in adhering to the Joint Convention. In addition, it was decided to hold at least one topical meeting on the safety challenges and responsibility issues related to the disposal of spent fuel or radioactive waste in another country than the one where it was generated. An extraordinary meeting will also be held where the president is to discuss his findings from consultations with contracting parties not adhering to the obligations of the joint convention. The open-ended working group is a separately chaired session during the review meeting where contracting parties propose and discuss, discuss potential improvements to the Joint Convention. Canada submitted a joint proposal with France for assessing and enhancing the commitment of contracting parties to the peer review process. Although consensus by contracting parties was not reached, there was general support for the intent of the proposal to promote participation. This included reflecting in the summary report the extent to which contracting parties have fulfilled their obligations under the Joint Convention, 
sending a letter from the president of the fifth review meeting to those contracting parties who have not fulfilled their obligations, and providing a final overview of the fifth review meeting at the next organizational meeting. On the margins of the joint convention, 15 bilateral meetings were held with members of the Canadian delegation. Discussions surrounded such topics as management of radioactive waste, including the status of DGR programs and opportunities for collaboration between regulators. These meetings resulted in Canada proposing to hold the first multinational regulators workshop on deep geological repositories for sharing regulatory knowledge and experience with advanced regulators on the licensing process for deep geological repositories. The CNSC offered to host the first meeting and is tentatively planned for early 2016. Thank you. I will now pass the presentation back to Mr. Ramsey Jamal. Thank you very much, Ms. Macon. So, in conclusion, the, uh, during the fifth review meeting, contracting parties devoted some time to identifying challenges common to many of the participating countries. These challenges are referred to as overarching issues, and they consist of staffing, staff development, funding, knowledge management, and other human resources area. Maintaining an increasing public involvement and engagement on waste management and to provide public confidence and acceptance. Contingency plans for management of radioactive waste from a significant nuclear or radiation accident. And management of disused seal sources. Hence, all of the contracting parties for the upcoming review meeting in 2018, they will have to address these issues. With respect to the overall conclusion, the Joint Convention continues to be a valuable tool to all contracting parties and specific for Canada by allowing a peer review process and to share good practices and to discuss emerging issues. Canada continues to be a strong participant and we are being a leader in transparency and continuously meeting the obligation of the Joint Convention. And at this point, I would be MS not to thank our federal partners and the licensees who contributed and stakeholders to the successful participation of the Canada Joint Convention. Our next steps will be that CNSC staff will update the Commission on Canada's participation for the next Joint Convention meeting as part of our annual regulatory oversight report for radioactive waste, and that will be presented to you in 2018. With this, I conclude the presentation. We'll be able to answer any questions you may have.